Carpenters Ministry presents this refreshing and life-changing teaching. We trust that this message will be a blessing to you. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. That person is expectant. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Before I teach my message, the Lord has asked me to ask you a very simple question. And when God asks you a question, I think it's important that you listen. He said to ask you, is there anything too hard for me? <laughs> Is there anything too hard for me? Simple question. Ngozi, what's your name? Peter. Biola, is there anything too hard for God? Is there anything too hard for me, says your father? Don't be quick to answer. But he asked me to ask you that question. When I began to ask him why, he told me why. He said a lot of my children come for services like this trusting me for destructive miracles. I said, what do you mean by destructive miracles? Maybe there's a growth in your body. There's a fever that needs to leave. There's a tumor that needs to melt away. You can see it, you can feel it, you can touch it. So therefore, you can believe me for it, says God. He says, but I don't only do destructive miracles, I do creative miracles as well. But some of you have put a limit and decided, I, I can believe that when pastor prays, this, this lump will go. And I can believe that when pastor prays, this swelling will go away. And I can believe that this fibroid will be melted away. But you've put a limit as to understanding that the Father creates as well. So is there anything too hard for me, says God? Today, he's going to create sperm for some people. Today, he's going to create eggs for some women. If you need a brand new organ, you know, he won't just bother repairing it. He'll just replace it with a new one. There is no limit to what God can do. So even before we start to hear the word, remember the question, is there anything too hard for me, says God. Somebody needs to pull down that stronghold like prayer sang where you've decided that there's just some things God can do and some things he can't do. He can zap a tumor in a minute and he can give you a womb if you don't have one in a second. That's who God is. He's not a man. He's not a man. I said he's not a man. There are some good operations that take place. Breakthrough surgeries, but they last 24 hours. 36 hours in intensive care. And eventually the doctor solves the problem. Glory be to God. God doesn't need 36 hours to give you a brand new heart. He just needs a faith connection 
with you and in a second a creative miracle takes place is there anything too hard for me says God lift your hands and worship him 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 you need to meditate on that question is there anything too hard for the Lord take those things you've put away and said God can't fix this one I've had it for too long is there anything too hard for me says God glory be to God glory be to God hallelujah 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 the healing miracles of Jesus part 17 I am like Jesus I teach first he went about teaching and then the healing but I can tell you that already healings are taking place the healing rain has been falling and people are already getting their healing so be expectant don't wait say by the time pastor finishes preaching then she will sing a song and dance and after that she will have word of knowledge then she will pray don't be sure you've got to be open and ready even right now amen the healing miracles of jesus part 17. yay how do you receive the word of god the healing miracles of jesus part 17. Some of us don't want to shout and shake so that the healing will not pass us. So we want to stay quiet and spiritual so that we'll catch the healing. It might be your shouting and shaking that you will catch it. I said the healing miracles of Jesus part 17. <laughs> Miracle number 12. The demon possessed man in the synagogue. See another demonized man, yes. The demon possessed man in the synagogue. Why have we been studying the healing miracles of Jesus? Because Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So if he healed then, he is healing now. Amen. If he healed then, he has healed now. Glory be to God. So that story appears in two Gospels, Mark chapter 1 and Luke chapter 4. And I'll read both, even though we'll focus more on the Mark chapter 1 story. Mark 1 verse 21. Then they went to Capernaum, and immediately on the Sabbath, he entered the synagogue and taught, and they were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one, having authority and not as the scribes. Now there was a man in their synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone! What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the unclean spirit had convulsed him and cried out with a loud voice, he came out of him. Then they were all amazed, so that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority, he commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread throughout all the region around Galilee. Luke chapter 4, 31. Then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. Now in the synagogue, there was a man who had a spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and did not hurt him. And they were all amazed. 
and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word this is, for with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the report about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. Amen. In this story, we see a demon-possessed man who was delivered by Jesus. Our focus today will not be on his demonic oppression necessarily. We've dealt with that in one of the other miracles we took, how to deal with demonic oppression. But our focus will be on the fact that this demonic oppression was an expression of Satan in his life. Amen. So the principles we're going to see and learn here will apply to every expression of Satan in your life. And since it's a healing service, we're focused on sickness and disease as expressions of Satan in your life. So when you are dealing with a cancer diagnosis, or you're dealing with a faulty liver, or a dodgy kidney, or a pancreas that is not working well, these are expressions of Satan. It is not God who puts those things in your body. And so this man was demon-possessed, but the same way the demon got driven out of him is the same way every expression of Satan in our lives will get taken care of today and always. Amen. 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 We also see that Jesus went, says he went immediately into the synagogue. And that tells me that Jesus, you know, had a passion to teach his word, had a passion to get to the people with the word of God. And some of us got here very early, 7.30, 8 o'clock. We're here early because we're hungry. You know, we have a passion for the word of God. When you have a passion for the word of God, you will receive your healing. Amen. Jesus went immediately, the Bible says. Let me ask a question. If Jesus did not go to the synagogue that day, is it likely that the demon-possessed man would have been delivered? The Bible says he was in their synagogue. It means it's very likely he was not a member of the synagogue. It, he call, Mark calls it their synagogue. So it means that the guy came in and probably had been coming in looking for help. But it was the day Jesus came into the synagogue that the man got his help. Some of us are here visiting here in the Carpenters Church. You will not leave the same. Amen. Amen. People are watching on live stream. People are logging in. They've heard about the healing service. So they've come to their church. Jesus is here. And Jesus is here to heal and to do us good. Because in this church, we love the word of God. Can I hear people who love the word of God? In this church, we have a passion for the word of God. In this church, we go immediately to where the word of God is taught. And where we can teach the word of God, we open our mouths and we share the word of God at every opportunity. So anyone who comes our way comes in contact with Jesus. Somebody again who loves the word of God, give me a shout. Glory be to God. Let's look at three things. From this story three things from this story number one there is a difference when the undiluted word of god is taught simple point there is a difference when the undiluted word of god is taught there is a difference when the undiluted word of God is taught. Verse 22 says, They were astonished. They were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Luke says, They were astonished at his teaching. For his word was with authority. They were astonished. They were shocked. They were amazed. They saw a difference. Church, what was that difference? The difference is in the authority that backs the undiluted word. There is a difference when the word of God, the undiluted word of God is taught. And I'm glad to tell you and announce to you that today I'm teaching you the undiluted word. Amen. And that difference is in the authority that backs the word of God. He says they were astonished because his word was with authority. And not because of me, but because of the grace of God upon my life. Some of you sitting here today will be astonished today at the teaching because my teaching will come forth with authority. Glory be to God. That is the difference when the undiluted word of God is taught. 
They were amazed. They were shocked. Authority, like we know, is the word exousia. And that's the word delegated power or delegated influence. Jurisdiction. Liberty. Right. Delegated power. Delegated influence. Jurisdiction. Last week we prayed for leaders in this church. And some of the new leaders, I poured oil on them. What was I doing? I was giving them authority to operate in their new offices. I was delegating power onto them in their jurisdiction. So if they were anointed as family group leaders, that family group that will be given to them is their jurisdiction. But you know what authority, that word exousia also means? It comes from a word that means to be out. And what does that really mean? It means, like in the example I gave, Chris, come quickly. In the example I gave, Chris is a new leader. Of having prayed for Chris last week, I can still see the oil. Didn't you bat since last week? <laughs> Some of the oil, he probably left the oil for anointing purposes. So Chris was prayed for last week, and he was prayed for as an assistant family outreach group head, right? So Chris is going to get a family group. When he goes to that jurisdiction, you know, you might see Chris there handling the family group, but really, do you know what's happening? I said exousia comes from a word to be out. What, the, what does that mean? It means the person who is delegating authority comes out of themselves and comes into the person to whom they delegated authority. So it means Chris is operating in his family group, but it's really me as his pastor who gave him authority. And of course, on top of me, Jesus Christ, who gave me authority to give him authority that is there. So we come out, the person giving the authority comes out of themselves and operates in the person exercising authority. Isn't that a beautiful picture? So that means that when you speak the word with authority, it may be you you are seeing in the mirror, but the minute you step out in that authority in the name of Jesus, it is as if Jesus is out of himself and in you and who the demon sees, Jesus. Thank you. Who the sickness sees is Jesus. For somebody who respects authority, when Chris speaks, they won't say, are you this small boy? I, I senior you. What are you doing? I, no. They will see Pastor Ketch. And they will see Jesus who appointed Pastor Ketch. And if Chris says, no, this thing you are doing is not right, they will say, yes, Brother Chris. But Brother Chris could be 15 years younger than the person he's speaking to. Glory be to God. To be out. That's the difference when the undiluted word is taught. It's in the authority that backs the word of God. So the Bible says they were surprised because Jesus taught like one that possesses authority. That's another translation. This time, why were they so shocked? Because Jesus was speaking about himself. Each time Jesus taught the word, he was speaking about himself. So he spoke with authority. It says he didn't speak like the scribes. That word scribe is the word grammatius. It is not in the verbosity. It is not in the length. It is not in the English in a message that necessarily makes it a message with authority. It is not even how much you shout that means there is authority. If it is the undiluted word, Jesus himself being taught, there is authority and that is the difference. Somebody say amen. amen. That's the difference. He taught with authority. If you want to see the healing anointing in your life, you need to submit yourself to the authority in the undiluted word. You need to know that the undiluted word is going forth now and it's going forth with authority. And the authority is for your good. It's not authority to put you under. It's authority to effect destructive and creative miracles in your life. Somebody say amen. amen. So I said there is a difference when the undiluted word of God is taught. But you know what else? Still under that point, it, the enemy recognizes that difference and he gets worked up. He gets agitated. The enemy recognizes if I'm here and I'm teaching another gospel 
and I have polluted the gospel, the enemy will be comfortable. If the demon-possessed man went to the synagogue, there are people here who are demon-oppressed or maybe even possessed. Don't think the demons don't come to church. Look at the guy next to you and say, oh boy, you get demon. <laughs> if you look at your husband and he gives you a slap, don't call me. So boy, be like, say that's behavior where you put up last night. Be like, say you get demon. There are people who come in, and they, but they come in for help. But it's not sad when you see in a church where they notice somebody has a demonic problem and the people get agitated, not the demon. Hey, bless that guy, get demon. But shift or shift. Why are you shifting? Shift towards him with the authority you have. Take care of it. I said, take care of it. The enemy recognizes the difference. The enemy knows when the undiluted word of God is taught because the enemy sees the authority and he knows what's about to happen to him. So the enemy is agitated. The Bible says, as Jesus began to teach, and, and listen, when he says they were astonished, if you look in the Greek at the verb there, it means it was for a prolonged amount of time they were astonished. That means Jesus took his time to teach. Jesus didn't come for five minutes and say, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. And they all answered, yeah. Hi -ya, hi -ya. We're doing Chinese film at the pulpit. Jesus didn't do that. He took time to teach the word and there was prolonged astonishment from people listening. And at some point, Satan began to get agitated. The Bible says the demon-possessed man cried out. started shouting. started getting worked up. He was very uncomfortable. Church, the enemy should get agitated when you open your mouth. If you're not getting the enemy worked up, you are either not saying the undiluted word or you don't know there's authority backing what you say. How many of us get agitated in the presence of the enemy? Have you seen believers? Let me say this. Because many times, we miss our healing. We miss our miracle. And sometimes people die because believers don't know how to pray when the enemy is manifesting. I have not really come to understand and we're going to see that shortly. Why you will see believers gathered around a sick person who is showing the symptoms of sickness in a bad way. And what are they doing? Makala brakasha. Pe, 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 pe. Palea, 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 palea. Brethren, let us begin to pray. Let us begin to pray. Many times that prayer is backed by the spirit of fear. And you pray and pray and pray until you finally kill that person. I won't ask how many of us has it happened to. And the person dies. Do you know why you are praying like that? Because you were agitated in the presence of the enemy. What you were seeing was agitating you. And in order to respond to the agitator, you got more agitated. And you, in your prayers, you began to shout and scream and cry out. Why? Listen, agitated people talk a lot. Agitated people shout and cry out. People are not agitated and they are quiet. Flip it, therefore. If you are teaching or speaking the undiluted word of God with authority and Satan gets agitated, what is he going to do? I can hear you. He will start talking. He will start shouting. He will start walking you up. Suddenly, that disease starts getting more flamed up. Things begin to look worse. He begins to talk to you throughout the night. All kinds of thought bombs begin to hit you, hit you, hit you, hit you, hit you. Your child will die. You will die. In fact, you will die, resurrect, and die again. <laughs> Friends, he's only talking because he's agitated. You keep talking. I said, you keep talking. The undiluted word. 
Pastor Larry reminded me this morning, when I told him this morning the miracle I was going to be teaching on, he reminded me that I didn't even remember that I had preached a message from this Mark chapter 1 called Becoming the Enemy's Nightmare in 2003, I think. In the, back in the day, I didn't even remember. And he says one of the points I said in that message was that, I said, you should have told me yesterday, I'll have gone back to check that message, was that as Jesus was teaching, he just took care of the demonic problem and continued to teach. Continue what he was saying. Deliverance was part and parcel of the exercise. There was no break in transmission. We are stopping church today because we have found a demon. Brethren, gather. Let us begin to pray. No. No. When the enemy is agitated, friends, he talks. Has your body ever talked to you before? I can't hear you. <laughs> this is my body. I didn't know you can talk. You think you can speak Igbo? This is my body. It can, even, it can speak English. It even attempts French sometimes. Anything it, it thinks, I have a smattering of understanding. So if it tries English and I don't respond, the, my body will start talking in Igbo. If Igbo doesn't work, he went to French from my primary school days. It just needs to get my attention. Your body talks to you. Symptoms speak to you. Symptoms tell you the worst case scenario. And sometimes doctors support it. The doctors will tell you everything that will possibly go wrong until you begin to ask questions. And they reluctantly... Are you put trained that way, Yona? They train you that way to give worst case scenario just in case. You are born again, Sha, so I'm sure you don't do that. Have you seen doctors that do that? They tell you the worst thing to prepare you and to cover themselves. Then when you begin to probe and probe and probe, and say, but doctor, can this thing not happen? Well, in some rare cases. So, oh boy, why not talk that rare cases? I nominate myself as a rare case. Since you don't want to tell me, I will be that exception. Well, actually, it only happens in one, in uh, 10 million people, and that's one. But they give you the worst case scenario. They keep talking and talking. Friends, there is a difference when the undiluted word of God is taught. The difference is in the authority that backs the word of God. And I'm so excited because this morning I'm teaching you the undiluted word of God backed with exousia. You may be seeing me, but Jesus is right here. The one who has delegated that authority is right here and he's giving it out through my lips. And you better reach out and receive it. Amen. Amen. And the enemy knows. He gets agitated. He gets worked up when he hears the authority in the undiluted word. Andrew Womack says, Satan rules through intimidation, deception, and lies. And that's all he's shouting is. Just to intimidate you and shut you up. And then he begins to repeat his stories. Repeat his stories. And just say the things that he says. No, we shouldn't do that. He's agitated. So that's why he's acting that way. Number two, a command given in authority expels the enemy. <laughs> a command given in authority expels the enemy. What did Jesus do in verse 25? The Bible says Jesus rebuked him. Somebody say rebuked. I can't hear you. Rebuked. He charged him. He forbade him. That's what it means. He admonished him. In other words, when he told him, be quiet, another translation says he told him to shut up. A command given in authority expels the enemy. People in authority issue commands. They don't discuss. They don't negotiate. I'll say it again. People in authority issue commands. We know the story of the centurion in Matthew chapter 8. And he says, look, I'm a man under authority. I have servants under me. And I say to one, come. And what does he do? He goes. Is that what he said? Come and what happens? Go and what happens? He goes, simple. Simple. People in authority issue commands. When you give a command in authority, it expels the enemy. Simple. 
To command is to direct with specific authority. Jesus rebuked him and said, shut up, be quiet and come out of him. Did the enemy negotiate? Did he start discussing? Why then do you do that? Why do you discuss with him? Why is it called a faith command? Because when Jesus rebuked him, what happened? The man convulsed. He manifested someone. Did it look like he was coming out? No. But Jesus, did they tell you that Jesus began to command him 100 times? He waited for him to do his drama. And he came out. He came out. When you speak to your heart and command your heart to be perfect, expect it to respond. When you speak to your womb and command it to receive seed and retain seed for nine months, expect it to obey. You say, are you calling my womb the enemy? No. The thing that is stopping your womb from receiving seed is from the enemy. It's not your womb that is the problem. And if the thing is named and you speak to it, expect it to be expelled. If you speak to it with the authority that comes from having heard the undiluted word, it doesn't have a choice. Well, like God asked us at the beginning, some of us put a limit on who can. I can command headache. Cancer, hey, pastor, can I come to your office? It's okay to come. We should support one another and there's grace here. So awesome, come. But don't come in fear because your anointing is not enough. No, no, that's not the reason to come. Because for some of us, cancer, <laughs> that guy is tough. Oh. If I tell it to come out just like that, we have to fast. What are you fasting for? For cancer to suddenly realize that it is a name that is smaller than the name of Jesus. The name at which every knee must bow. Every means every. You see, when you learn to take the Bible in its simplicity, you will have supernatural things happen to you. When you learn to just take the Bible in grace, not works, not what you have to do, in pure, undiluted grace, in its simplicity, the way Jesus expected us to take it, supernatural things will happen to you like they are happening to you now, in very simple ways. There will be no drama but your life will be changed. Amen. Amen. You give a faith command. And when you give it in authority, it expels the enemy. And listen, the enemy doesn't have a choice. Look at your neighbor and say, that sickness doesn't have a choice. It must leave you today. Today is the day. Authority is here. It's in pastor's mouth. And it's in your mouth too. No choice. Do you know what they said? It says, when the demon left him, the Bible says, they were amazed. Listen, listen. Hey, what kind of doctrine is this? That even, listen, even the unclean spirits, even, what does that tell you? They had decided, unclean spirits, those ones, they obey. So unclean spirits for them was like one of the worst case scenarios they could see and they say ah even unclean spirits obey him what have you put in the category of evil ah now wow healing service was awesome today do you know pastor prayed for somebody and do you know even somebody with cancer got healed hey Healing service was great today. Oh. People got healed of malaria, all those ones, all those chingom, chingom disease. You know, chingom, malaria, eh, what's another chingom disease? Headache. Eh. But you know that even one man that could not walk got up and walked. Why do you put even there? Because somewhere in your mind, that one is hard. And that's why you will not see it happen to you if you put it in that category. Hey, even unclean spirits, oh. ah, even a madman, eh? what kind of authority is this? It is the authority that comes from above. 
And when you give a faith command, like I will give at the end of this message, with that authority, get it straight that there is no option. The enemy must be expelled. And things must change and turn around in your life. Not because of how hard you shout it or the power with which you declare it, but simply because of the authority that is in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Remember what I said, if you take the word of God in its simplicity, supernatural things will happen to you just like that. Just like that. And listen to me, church. Listen, listen. When the, that demon left him, there's some things you need to get here. When that demon left him, and the Bible says, they were astonished. What did they say? They said, listen, what new doctrine is this? This is why you are seated here, needing healing, but you are first of all listening to the teaching. Because they knew that what they saw was a result of the doctrine. It was a result of the teaching. There are many places where teaching does not take place. All kinds of power games take place. That's not what we do here. They saw the enemy expelled and they said, hey, what new teaching is this? The manifestation you will see today will be as a result of the teaching of the undiluted word. Say, so what new doctrine? What teaching is this? Why would they look at a demon, leave a man, and reference doctrine? In fact, in the church today of Jesus Christ, there's no link. People are looking for action. If you want action in your life, stay in the word. I said stay in the word. Stay in the authority zone. Look at your neighbor and say, stay in the authority zone. Stay in the word of God. That's where the action is. Amen. That's where the action is. It doesn't matter. Church, it doesn't matter the medical name that has been given to that condition. If you stay in the authority zone, the enemy will be expelled. Simple. Philippians 2 tells us God has given him the name that is above every other name. The name of Jesus is above cancer. It's above liver cirrhosis. It's above high blood pressure. It's above heart condition. Those are names. Those things have no choice but to be expelled when you give a faith command. Amen. I, amen. amen. I said amen. amen. I said amen. amen. I said amen. amen. Write down Isaiah 45, 22 to 23, and you can read that later. And let me give you the third point. So I've told you to stay in the authority zone. In the authority zone is where you see action. The Bible tells us in Mark 16 that the Lord worked with them. They went out, they preached. And the Lord worked with them, confirming the word through accompanying signs and miracles. It is the teaching. It is the new doctrine. It is letting you know. The choir and prayer literally taught us today. Wonderful confessions. Wonderful declarations. And they were issuing them with authority. As if prayer saw my message. And she was giving commands with authority. And I can tell you, even as she ministered, the enemy was already very agitated. It was just for you to recognize it and take your healing. Pastor didn't even have to come up because she issued it with authority. And she said, these things have to leave. They have to bow because we are already delivered and we're already free. That is what agitates the enemy. And that is what keeps you in the action zone. When you stay in the word zone, you stay in the authority zone, you will be in the action zone. And that's the zone that you see great things happen in your life just like that. God has told me mighty healings are going to take place today. Great healings are going to take place. Some of them are already happening. And I mean that. I mean that Jesus is here. He's right here already. And the authority in the word of God is agitating that condition. Don't tell me how long you have had it. 
it doesn't really matter to God. Jesus died and rose again on Calvary before you were physically born. Even if you were born with a hereditary condition, the sacrifice of Jesus had already taken place before your parents even met each other. So don't tell me I was born with this disease and somebody needs to hear that. In my family, this is what happens to us. Which family? When you got born again, you got transferred into a brand new family. And in that family, there is life more abundantly. In that family, there is healing. In that family, there is every good thing. Glory be to God. And when you speak with authority, the enemy gets agitated. He recognizes the difference. He knows you're not just like any other bunch of people. And he must be expelled. None of you is living here the same way you came. Not because of me, but simply because of the authority in the name of Jesus that we proclaim with all boldness. Luke said that in, 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 in Luke 4, 36, it says they were all amazed, listen, and spoke among themselves. What a word! What a teaching! Wow! Pastor, I didn't know. I have authority in the name of Jesus. What a word this is! For with authority and power, with exousia and dunamis, where authority is, power is. And when you declare the word in authority, power comes forth and destroys and creates whatever needs to happen in your body. With authority and power, with exousia and with dunamis. And the exousia of God is here. And the dunamis of God is here. And it's bringing about healing in your life. Lift your hands and praise him. I'll give you the last point. Lift your hands and praise him. And this point takes us straight to the heartbeat of God. And that is this. That the news of the display <coughs> of the power of God can reach everyone everywhere. Everyone <laughs> Everywhere. Mark 1 28 says, His fame spread throughout all the region. Luke 4 37 says, The report of him, the report about him, went into every place in the surrounding region. Fame is what you hear. Why is it so important? We know the story of the woman with the issue of blood. Imagine if she didn't hear about Jesus. The Bible says she heard about Jesus and then she went for her healing. Some of us have not learned to testify. When you testify of what God has done, you spread the fame of what God has done far and wide and other people get healed. It says the report, the rumor, hey, I was in the synagogue the other day, oh, there's this man named Jesus, that madman that has been coming, that we always keep him at the back. Jesus didn't even go to him. Get that. I'm not likely going to walk through here. I'm going to touch everybody here. Jesus didn't do that. He simply taught the word. And the word agitated him where he was. And the miracle took place. They say, hey, we've never seen it like that. And the Bible says the fame, the report, the news, the rumor of Jesus went everywhere. And listen. When he goes out like that, it is not just people that hear. Satan hears too. Remember what the, the man told him? Jesus, I know who you are. Remember the seven sons of Sceva? Do you remember them? They came to try to do by power and by might casting out of demons. And the demon said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. Excuse me, who are you? We've always focused on the who are you. But listen, he says, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. May your fame go far to where people need help. And may they say, ah, when I get to the hospital, I want it to be Professor Ene on duty because I've heard that she has never lost a case. I don't know what's about that doctor. Ah, I'd like to meet Sister Oyeuna. Please tell me the day Dr. Oyeuna is on duty because I've heard that before she even treats you, she prays for you. And many times you don't even need that treatment anymore. Because she supports it with the undiluted word of God. 
ah, this brother in, in my family group, he's always speaking the word. You're not feeling well, come, let's go to his house. He will join faith with us. And you will see that something, because there have been like five, six, seven, eight testimonies in family group, just because this brother prayed for them. And the brother is not even a leader. What happened? The fame about the authority that this person has understood and begun to dish out went far. And that is what it's all about with Jesus. Don't think your healing is just about you. Yeah, you will enjoy good health and your body will be fixed. But it has to go far. The people have to hear. The demons have to hear. But we sit on our testimonies and keep our, the story within our little selves. If you read further down in Mark chapter 1, and I won't go there, further down, you find out that after he left there, he went to Peter's house. And he, he got Peter's mother-in-law healed. This was another day that Jesus did many things with his virtue, just like the Mark chapter 5 day. And he got Peter's mother-in-law healed, and the fever left her. But read it later, you'll find out what happened. The Bible says that after Peter's mother-in-law got healed, she served them. After serving them, you would think that Jesus went to rest. He finished preaching in the synagogue, getting a demon-possessed man delivered, went to eat in Peter's mother-in-law's house, found a fever, fever, come on, get out, fever. This woman wants to cook me off, you are here. Get out. And he drove the fever away, and Peter's mother-in-law got up. That was a good, nice mother-in-law. Got up and went immediately and made the phone number for him. Jesus should have shut down. But you know what happened? As he was leaving Peter's house, he opened the door. At the door, the Bible says, gathered at the door were multitudes. In that short time, from the synagogue to when he was eating, and dealing with that fever, the fame and the report went far. And they, where did he go? Where, they saw him go. It's like he's in that Peter's house. They were at the door. Multitudes were there with demons, sickness, and Jesus took care of all of them. We talk about the man who was demon-possessed in the synagogue. His miracle was just a trigger. Imagine if the fame and the report Imagine if in their amazement they stopped talking about what they saw that day. But they left the synagogue. Service closed. And they, ah, okay. When is the next healing service? Maybe in September. No. They kept talking. This is what we heard. This is what we saw. The testimony service. These are the testimonies we heard in church. They began to talk. As they talked, the fame went round. The fame went out. And Jesus opened the door. And right there at the door, the Bible says, they were there waiting for him. Glory be to God. The Bible says the whole city was gathered together at the door. And then he healed many who were sick with various diseases. And he cast out many demons. Lift your hands and worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. Worship him. I didn't ask you to stop. There is a difference when the word of God, your <clears throat> undiluted word of God is taught. There is a difference. There is a difference. There is a difference. The enemy recognizes this difference and gets agitated. He does that. He knows the differences in the authority, in the doctrine. Well, there's authority here. So every sickness, every disease in your body is agitated because they know they have to go. They know they have to go. I said they know they have to go. The lease is over. Rent is over. They know they have to go. Fever, you know you have to go. Malaria, you know you have to go. Tumor, you know you have to go. Why have you tolerated that malaria? Is it your name? Every two months, every three months it happens, you receive it. Today it has to go. Tumor, you have to melt and dematerialize. 
swollen testes, you have to go. There is agitation. Not from us. We have the authority. The enemy is running scared. Because the worst thing you did was put him under the teaching of the undiluted word. The authority is the difference and he knows it. And when he gets agitated, don't sit there and watch him. Issue the faith command. Rebuke it. Command it to get out. You've got to go. I won't live with you any longer. You've got to go. There's no even. Hey, even this lump went. Hey, even, no, no, no. Is there anything too hard for me, says the Lord. It's got to go. And when you have your testimony, share it. That's what it's all about. And many will be gathered at the door of Greenville. Many will be gathered at the door of your home. Because the rumor would have gone round. There is a new doctrine. There is a teaching that is pure and undiluted. That is focused in Jesus and not any man. And when that teaching goes out, things happen. That's the news. And many more will come. And just like Jesus, we don't run out of virtue. And you don't run out of virtue. And there will be more than enough virtue for everyone who comes for help. Lift your hands and glorify him. Glorify him. Glorify him. Priye, can you come? Soton, can you come? Can you just sing something? Can both of you just sing something? The healing rain is here. <laughs> I said the healing rain is here. The healing rain is here. You're watching by live stream. You're listening by CD or DVD. The healing rain is here. If you're in the other tent, I'm sure other people in the other tent, the healing rain is here. The healing rain is here. It's a good confession. Sing it. Right Healing is right now. It's not right tomorrow. It's right now. It's right now. Right now. Yeah, sing it. Right now. Right now. Right now. Healing is right now. Is right now. By his stripes, you were healed. Right you were healed already. Glory be to God. We are healed already. Glory be to God. Right now, right now. Healing is right now. Healing is right now. Healing is right now. Declare it, sickness, you can stay no longer. Sickness, you can stay no longer. By his trust, I have been Jesus, it's your Jesus, will. Jesus, it's your will that I am free. Yeah, declare it with authority. Sickness, you can stay no longer. By his trust, I have been 
Come on, come on, declare it. Declare it with authority. Sickness, you can stay no longer. By his stripes, I have been here. Jesus, Jesus, it's your will. It's your will. It's your will. Too hard for me, says the Lord. Sickness, you can stay no longer. By his stripes, I have been healed. And Jesus, it's your will that I am healed. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Come on, come on, come on. Right now. Right now. Sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. Sing it. Healing is right now. Sing it, sing it, sing it. Right now. Yes. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Not tomorrow. Right now. Not next week. Right now. Right now. Right now. Yes. Right now. Yes. Right now. Healing is right now. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. <laughs> There's some agitation going on in your body right now. <laughs> There's some agitation going on. Some things are packing their load. They are packing their load. Right now, not tomorrow. Not next week. Right now is healing. Some of you can begin to do what you couldn't do before. And you find that it has taken place already. That's why you came. And your expectations will not be cut off. Right now, right now. Glory be to God. 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 Every head bowed and every eye closed. Somebody's got a swelling on their leg. It's a pretty bad swelling on your leg. Again, you could be here in the tent, you could be in another tent, or you could be watching by live stream. But if you're right here in the tent, let me see your hand. It's a bad swelling on your leg. I'm not talking about a small swelling. If you're the person, wave your hand well. Yeah, put your hand on that swelling. And we're going to command it to dematerialize and just melt away. And just melt away. And let me tell you this. I haven't shared this publicly. But for like two years, I had a lump or bump or big swelling on some part of my body. Good enough, it was a part that none of you could see. Only my husband knew about it. And one day that was like any other day, just an ordinary day, I woke up. And that is how that thing just began to melt, just began to bring out all kinds of funny-looking things were coming out of it. I didn't pray any extra prayer. For those two years, I just kept declaring that I was perfect. And I declared that that mighty lump was a stranger in my body. I don't know what it was. I didn't ask. But one day that I woke up like any other day, that was the end of it. 
That's what happens when you stand on the word of God. So the people who are touching, two people I saw your hands up. You are touching your leg right now. Believe as we give that faith command. That that's the end of that thing. That's the end of faith. It's a stranger. And it's expelled. It doesn't belong in your body. In the name of Jesus, swelling dematerialize. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Be every wit whole in yes. Jesus' name. Yes. You are perfectly healed. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody with a spinal problem. I think, I think it's as a result of an injury. I don't know. I, I just heard in my spirit, sp I injury. Spinal problem. Put your hand on your back. I'm seeing one hand over there. Yes. I don't know what the problem is. Another hand there. It's a spinal problem as a result of an injury. And I want you to stand up and after we pray, I want you to do what you couldn't do before. If you couldn't bend down before, after we give the faith command, that thing doesn't have a choice. It will leave your body and you will find out that you can do what you could not do before. So I see one or two people with their hands up standing up and I'm sure others are watching. We're going to talk to your spine and command it to be perfect. Remember I said it's a spinal problem from an injury. Spinal problem, spinal condition, we curse you in the name of Jesus. Amen. We command a creative miracle. Yes. In the name of Jesus, you are perfectly healed in the name of Jesus. Now begin to move and do what you couldn't do before. Yeah, God because is, you're perfectly healed. Yeah, in somebody's spine, God is putting things that we're missing. Amen. I don't know what it is. What, what, what is it called? Um, I don't know, there's some things in between the bones that are supposed to be there that had degenerated. Well, when he said creative miracle, that just began to take place. So make I don't see you doing what you couldn't do before. Don't stand there. Do what you couldn't do before. Bend down, touch your toes, bend over, and receive your miracle. Glory be to God. Yes. Go ahead and do it. Yes. Glory be to God. 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 Every head is still bowed, every eye closed. Who is the lady with a very hot, peppery itch in her vagina? It's peppery. And when it happens, it's like you want to use all your fingers and scratch. Peppery. Where is that lady? Yes. I see two hands there. Yes, I see another one. It's a hot, peppery itch. We pour the cold water of the anointing upon that problem in the name of Jesus. We command that peppery situation whatever bacteria whatever disease you are we curse you get out in the name of jesus cool cool no more peppery each cool 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 waters yes healing rain yes it's done in the name of jesus it's done in the name of jesus there are just so many things you can go ahead there's so many things so many things God is doing here. Hallelujah. You pass out blood through your urine. I believe it's a lady also. If that's you, can you lift your hand up? Blood. Blood passed out. Yes, there's a hand over there's there. There's a hand. I'm not seeing it well. Lift it up well. Wave it well. Yes. I see that hand there. I see that hand. I see that hand. In the name of Jesus, I curse that condition. Yes. I command it to stop to desist right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Right now. Blood flow, you stop right now. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Name From of now Jesus. on, you'll pass out only urine peacefully. Yes. In yes. the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Somebody with a heart constriction. And it feels like there is a band with a padlock around your chest. Who is that person with a heart constriction? There's a hand over there. Another one over there. Heart be perfect. Constriction be gone. We open it up. The chains are broken. And you are free. Your heart is functioning perfectly in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody else with sores on their body. Sores on your body. Pastor Shola says sores on your buttocks specifically. Sores on your body, specifically on your buttocks. Where is that person? Are you here in the tent? Are you watching my live stream? Can we see your hand if you're here in the tent? 
who's got sores on their body, it might be a child, it might be a child, sores on your body, sores on your buttocks. Where are you? So what took you so long to raise your hand? Put your hand where those sores are. Sores, you dry up right now. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Nasal constriction is getting healed by the power of God. Wave your hand if you're the one. There's just so much flowing, so let's just respond fast. Yes, that's it. You are perfect. You are done. You are healed. Perfectly in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody with pile. And it's already coming out of your anus. It's sticking out of your anus already. Where is that person with pile? I don't see where they are pointing. Yes, I see you. Put your hand on your bum bum. It's abnormal for that thing to be coming out. So God is about to do a surgery on you right now. And we command that pile to be gone. In the name of Jesus. Go back to where you belong. No more pain when you go to the toilet. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody else is having a constipation problem. You haven't gone to the toilet. You've not had a bowel movement in about three, three days, three or four days. You haven't gone, you haven't poo-pooed. In the hospital, they'll give you, put some water in your bum. Well, some healing rain is going to pour in there now. Where is that person who hasn't gone to the toilet in three or four days? Are you here in this tent? Or are you watching by live stream? You're raising your hand, raise it confidently. Is there anybody in this tent? Or somewhere else? Maybe in the other tent? Yes? Are you showing me a hand? Sure, but I'm sure there's somebody else somewhere else. Well, we'll pray. If you're watching by live stream, if you're in another tent, yes, somebody there. Where's the person? I want to see your hand. Where are you? Yeah, look at me. Don't put your head down. Yeah, Lewis, you've not gone to the toilet in some days. Okay, you're going to go to the toilet today. Today, that thing is over. Whatever is causing it, it's not normal. And you'll go without pain. The poopoo will come out normally. Normally. We command that to happen. And it's done in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Nagging migraine. Migraine headache. You've had it for a while. Nagging. Nagging. I'm seeing some hands. Put your hand on your head. I command that harassment of the enemy to stop right now. Yes. Be perfectly healed. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Just lift your hands and thank him and receive it. Right now. It's gone. It's gone. Right now. I will never return. Right in now. the name of Jesus. Right now. In the name of Jesus. Someone right now. else. You have intermittent contractions on your leg. I don't know whether that's what is called muscle pull. I don't know. But intermittently, you have those kind of contractions on your legs, can, on your leg. Can you lift your hand up? I see a hand there. I see another hand. Can you put your hand on that leg? Put your hand on that leg. In the name of Jesus, I curse you contractions. Stop and cease in the name of Jesus. You're perfectly healed in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory be to God. Somebody with shortness of breath. This is moving so fast. God is not done. God is not done. Reach out and receive, even if we don't call your case. Shortness of breath. Yeah, I see your hand. That's it. That's the end of it. Shortness of breath, whether it's a lung problem, whether it's a, a blood problem, whether it's a heart problem, it really doesn't matter to me. All I know is that that shortness of breath is not of God. And so we expel it in the name of Jesus. And you should after now get up, run around, do what you couldn't do before. That's how you take your healing. That's, I know what it's like to have shortness of breath. I've been there. Oh, and it's not a good thing because it's not of God. But God has delivered you. God has healed you. That's it. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody has an arthritic problem in their hand and your hand is curved. It's a curved hand and it might be, yeah, it might, yeah I see a hand, but it's also somebody who's not here. There's somebody here who knows somebody with that problem. Yes, yes. So the person who's here, I pray for you also. But there's somebody who knows somebody with your hand is curved. It's curved. It's an arthritic problem. Yes. Remember the woman who was bound low for 18 years? It's very likely that was arthritis. And Jesus spoke to her and she was straightened immediately. So your hand is straightened instantly in the name of Jesus. Now begin to flex your hand and do what you couldn't do. And for that person who's standing for somebody, 
That's your loved one, wherever they are. That's the end of that problem. Tell them their case was called in church. And that's it. Arthritis, go in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. God is multiplying low sperm count for somebody. They told you your sperm count is low. Well, listen. God says to tell you, it's only one healthy sperm you need to make a child. But I'm going to give you more than one. Because I'm the God who is more than enough. So if you are the one, just lift your hand and collect as many sperm as you want and as many as you need. That is a creative miracle taking place right now. I don't see the hand who is being lifted. Yeah. No, don't, don't be shy, you. Except you don't want children. Yes, wave it well. As many sperm as you want. Healthy sperm. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's it. It's done. Where is the woman with blocked fallopian tubes? You've been diagnosed with blocked tubes. Yeah, lift your hand high up. Don't be shy. If you go to the doctor, you take off your clothes. When they diagnose you, they put things in your body. I see your hand right there. Somebody else? Where? Yes, I see you. Blocked tubes, huh? You've been told that lie. Yeah. Who else? Somebody over there in the other tent? Awesome. Somebody over here as well. You lying devil. Those tubes were created by Jesus to be perfect and to be free. So we flush out every obstruction in the name of Jesus. Your tubes are perfect. They are no longer blocked. They are clear and free. The healing rain is flushing through your tubes. And as many eggs or whatever needs to pass through tubes happens now in the name of Jesus right now right now right now if I were you I'll be jumping and shouting right now I'll be receiving right now right now <laughs> somebody that one of those people with the block tubes you've been trusting God for a child your baby is coming yeah get ready to conceive this month just get ready this is your next cycle. The tubes are open. They are open. They are open. They said they are open. In the name of Jesus, they are open. Somebody's right ear is opening. It's been plugged. Right ear, right ear. Yes, we'll pray for it now. Ear, be opened. Be opened. In the name of Jesus. Now begin to hear with that ear. Because Jesus has made you perfectly whole right now, right now, right now. Yeah, if he says begin to right hear, now. then yeah, you block the good ear that was the only good one before. Block it, block it and make sure you can hear with the right ear. That's what you do. That's how you take your healing. Don't just get prayed for and sit down there and expect something to happen without you taking it. You receive it by faith. What you couldn't do, you begin to do. And once you see that it's happened, begin to shout and testify and let the fame of Jesus' power go round and about. Glory be to God. Somebody with bleeding gums. Some of us put dental conditions in the even category. We think God cannot heal teeth. Your gums are always bleeding. Where are you? Yeah. Yeah, it's abnormal. Saw bleeding gums. Yeah. That's the end of that problem. I said that's the end of that problem. Jesus is the best dentist there is. That's the end of that problem. Gums, you are perfectly perfect. Like that of a brand new child. You're going to see restoration happen in your gums. In the name of Jesus Christ. A woman with a sore nipple. Ooh. Healing rain is pouring, it's pouring. It's pouring right now. Where's the woman with a sore nipple? A sore nipple. Yeah. That thing is not of God. It's very painful. Put your hand on your breast. God's compassion is there. You've gone through so much pain with that thing. That saw is gone. It's gone. It's expelled. It's gone. I said it's gone. You're going to wake up tomorrow morning and you find that it's not there. It's completely gone. In the name of Jesus Christ. 
Lift your hands and honor him. Who is the person whose eyes twitch? Your eyes are twitching. They just keep moving like that. Every other hand down and keep your hand up. That's a nervous condition and it's not of God. So I command that twitching to stop now. And I command your, I don't know what's it called, central nervous system, I don't know. Whatever it is, I command it to be perfect. Whatever is causing that twitching. Don't say it's hereditary. My mother's own used to twitch. You are not your mother. That's a lie that has held you bound. Twitching, you just stop. And if in any way stupid enough to try and show up again, tell it, didn't you hear the command? It's just convulsing and doing some drama. It's gone already. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and just praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Sing it, sing it. Praise him. Praise him. Sing it, sing it. Sing it. Yes, I'm not afraid. Yes, I receive it. Yes, healing rain. Sing it. Yes. Yes. Okay. And for everyone else, maybe your case was not called. Let's put into practice what we've just taught. Very simple. We're going to issue the faith command to your body. Just touch whatever part of your body. There's a man with a swollen testis. I mentioned you in passing at the beginning. Just make sure, yeah, make sure you receive it. I'm seeing your hand at the back. Make that, that, that testis is going down now in the name of Jesus. So when we issue the faith command, whatever part of your body, things are going to melt away. Things are going to be created. Somebody's blood type is going to change. You've been believing God for that. Things are going to happen in your body because the enemy is expelled when the faith command is given in authority. And I tell you, Jesus is expressing himself through us because we have his exousia. So we stretch forth our hands, touch your body, and we issue the faith command and we command healing in the name of Jesus. With the authority we have in the name of Jesus, we curse conditions that are not of God. We command things that should not be in your body be gone and be melted. We cause creative miracles in the name of Jesus. Lumps be gone. Growths be gone. Fibroids be gone. Every abnormality be gone. Get out of those temples. Eyes be healed. Ears be whole. Reproductive systems, you hear me. There shall be none barren. And you respond now. Joints be perfect. Arthritis be gone. And we declare this and issue that command in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And somebody shouted amen. amen. Sing it, sing it, sing it. Now let's sing it, let's sing it, sing it. Right now. Sing it! Right now. We praise you! Right now. We praise you! Right Rise to your feet and right praise now. Him! Right now. Yeah!
Can we, as an act of faith in receiving, give a very big shout of praise? <coughs> You don't look or sound like people whom the enemy has been expelled from their bodies. Can I hear a shout of praise? I didn't ask you to stop. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Father, we thank you. Because every healing, every word spoken, is signed, sealed, settled, and delivered. In the name of Jesus Christ. If you've touched your body and you've seen that something you couldn't do, you can do now or something that was on your body is gone, as you sit down, take out a piece of paper, write it down, that you have already seen the manifestation, and hand it to Anusha. Just raise your hand and say, I've got this paper. Anusha will take it from you. And let's spread the good news of what Jesus has done. And that's the way we receive more from him. Amen. Amen. One more shout of praise, please. Yeah, there was somebody that God told me about yesterday and I forgot when I was up there. But as I sat down, the Holy Spirit reminded me. So I just want to pray for somebody, a particular woman whose pregnancy has been threatened. And you may be here, but there's also somebody who's watching in hospital. You're watching this maybe by live stream. You're on bed rest because your pregnancy is not full term yet, but it's been threatened. So you've been asked to stay put. So every head bowed, I don't know if there's somebody here with that situation or if you know the person in hospital or you're watching by live stream, let me just see your hand up. If you know somebody, yes, I see a hand over there. So that hand is either up because you are the one. If, you're, if you are the one, wave your hand. Or if it is somebody you are standing for. Okay, you are standing for someone over there. All right, I see two hands over there. All right, you know somebody like that? Okay, okay, the Holy Spirit just reminded me, wouldn't let me be. Every head bowed, please. Every eye closed. Father, children are a heritage from you and the fruit of the womb is our reward. You are the one that gives babies, not Satan. So Satan has no right to touch what you have put. And so I speak to those pregnancies. I speak to those babies and I command them to be perfect and come to full term and be delivered perfectly. Nothing missing, nothing broken in the name of Jesus. One of you has, a, has swollen, swollen legs. That's part of what's causing the problem. I command that water retention, that high blood pressure, whatever is causing that pregnancy to be threatened, we put an end to it now. Whatever condition that is not conducive for those babies, we put a stop to it now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we declare that those babies are born full term, perfectly to the glory of God and for the benefit of their families in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody just give God praise.